Tonight on Y News. The Commission on Audit discovers over 3 million pieces of textbooks and other learning materials intended for public schools that remain unused in Department of Education warehouses. President Rodrigo Duterte says he is open to making them Vaxia available again, but with recommendation from Filipino experts. The Department of Justice begins its preliminary probe into sedition raps filed against Vice President Lenny Robredo and several opposition figures. President Duterte says he will push for the West Philippine Sea Code of Conduct when he flies to Beijing later this month. And the United States Homeland Security lifts security notice on NAIA. Good evening. Millions of pesos worth of books and teachers' manuals remained in DepEd warehouses in the past years. Arlene Delgado explains why. The Department of Education or DepEd failed to distribute instructional materials for public schools from school years 2014 to 2017. Based on the 2018 Annual Audit Report of the Commission on Audit or COA, over 113 million pesos worth of instructional materials like textbooks and teachers' manuals remained in five DepEd warehouses in Taguig City. These are equivalent to more than 3 million copies of materials purchased as buffer stocks. Buffer stocks are used to replace damaged books in schools hit by calamities, Depp and says. The COA also took note of the books for grade 3 students with erroneous content, which cost over 254 million pesos. In response, Depp had vowed to review their guidelines on purchasing instructional materials and to evaluate control on buffer stocks. The Education Department are now in the process of releasing the said buffer materials to lower units. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. President Rodrigo Duterte is open to their proposal to bring back the use of Dengvaksha due to a national dengue epidemic but with recommendations from Filipino experts. Rosa Licos details why. There is a need to address the growing number of dengue patients in the country. Based on a health department report, over 140,000 dengue cases were recorded from January to July 20, 2019. This is an increase of 98% from year 2018. Of the more than 140,000, 622 patients had died. And just this week, the DOH declared a national dengue epidemic. Several provinces, municipalities and barangays have declared state of calamity due to a rising number of cases of the mosquito-borne disease. But the health department stands firm that dengue vaxia is not the key to easing the ballooning dengue cases. It also argues dengue vaxia is not registered and not guaranteed to be used in mass vaccination. This vaccine is not designed for an outbreak response. It's designed for future use for mga taong nagka-dengue na dati. So, hindi naman siya kailangan madaliin kung sakali mang magparehistro siya uli later. Uh, it will do undergo a very thorough study just to see all of the data that, and the evidence is available now. But President Rodrigo Duterte admits he is in a quandary whether or not to allow the return of dengue vaxia to address the dengue epidemic in the country. Yes, I am open to the use of dengue vaxia again. Marami yung patay na. It's an, it's an epid, epidemic. Now, compare it with uh, vis a vis with those who died. I want to hear the words of uh, the experts, doctors. And we have enough uh, bright people here to tell us. I do not need foreigners to telling me. My own Filipino scientists and doctors would tell me what to do. I will be guided by their... Uh, Announcements. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The health department says Dengvaxia cannot be used for mass immunization in the country until it gets registered and examined thoroughly by experts. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Ten regions.
regions in the country are now included in the dengue epidemic threshold. These include Calabarzon, Mimaropa, Central Visayas, and the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or Barm, while Ilocos and National Capital Region are now in the alert threshold according to DOH. Yung dengue season natin kasi kahit na right after matapos yung rainy season, meron pa tayong mosquitoes. No? So we're expecting the cases na talagang peak natin nagsa-start na talaga August, September, October hanggang November minsan. And nagsa-start pa lang mag-decrease sa December. On August 19, the Health Department will issue their decision as to whether or not to use Dengvaxia again for mass immunization. Meron, meron din tayong na National Immunization Council na sila yung nag-aaral nag at nag-decide kung anong kasama sa ating immunization program. And this can also be convened kung sakaling kakailanganin. Once the result is positive, Dengvaxia still cannot be used right away according to the DOH. The DOH explains Dengvaxia still has to undergo relabeling and change of indication before being issued a certificate of product registration. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Several farmers call for help from the government as Typhoon Hana passed by Occidental Mindoro. Mirasol Abogadil explains why. Now that the weather condition has improved, damages to agriculture caused by the southwest monsoon enhanced by Typhoon Hana are now apparent in most parts of Occidental Mindoro. According to the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, more than 22 million pesos worth of crops got damaged in more than 8,000 hectares of plantation. Rice fields in the municipalities of Sablayan, San Jose, Mamburao, Kalintaan and Magsaysay, where farmers have just recently planted their crops, are the most devastated. The point na wash out, hindi na maulan sa kampanya na bang, wala na maanihin ang ating magkataka. Affected farmers call on the government for help as their fields are overflowing with water brought about by the enhanced monsoon. Farmers Reynante and Roldan lament after what has happened to their livelihood. Isipin mo lang siya, masakit talaga dahil bukod sa Lugi na yung kon mo sa palayan, gastos, wala ka pang kita. Panibagong gastos na naman. O di, saan kami kukuha ng igagastos ulit doon kung hindi kami matulungan. As of today, the affected farmers are looking for their own ways to make ends meet for their everyday needs. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. The southwest monsoon is still affecting most parts of the country. Based on Pagasa's latest forecast, moderate to occasionally heavy rains may still be experienced in Metro Manila, Ilocos Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Batanes, Babuyan Group of Islands, Mindoro Provinces, and Palawan. Possible flash floods and landslides may also occur. Western Visayas and the rest of Luzon will also experience scattered rain, shower, rain showers and thunderstorms. Moderate to strong winds will blow in Metro Manila. Isolated rain showers and thunderstorms will prevail over the rest of the country. Small sea craft and fishing vessels are advised not to venture in seaboards of Luzon, Visayas, and northern and eastern seaboards of Mindanao due to high waves. Pagasa says southwest monsoon is expected to gradually weaken this weekend so expect improving weather conditions except in the western section of Luzon. Did you know that some tourists prefer to visit the town of Sagada in Mountain Province during the rainy season? Find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Exploring the caves, trekking the mountains, plunging into a waterfall, visiting the infamous hanging coffins, meeting people, and more. These are just few of the fun activities to enjoy while in Sagada Mountain Province, located at the heart of the Cordillera region. Breathtaking views of spectacular landscapes can be seen along the 12-hour land travel from Manila via Banawe Ifugao or an around six-hour drive from Baguio City. And I have to say, maybe I had one of my best moments here uh -huh. while doing the Connection Caves because this was for me first time and I had a very nice guide and I think even if I do it one more time, 
like another place or even in France will be completely different. Enjoy. Tas yung tubig malamig parang siya. Hundreds of thousands of local and foreign tourists visit Sagada annually. In fact, according to the town's tourism office, more than 160,000 tourists visited Sagada last year. Noticeably, the number drops to a very few from June to September, considered as lean or off-peak season of tourism in the town. Despite the rainy season, some tourists prefer to visit Sagada as the serenity and peaceful atmosphere of the town is much appreciated. Ayon na walang walang masyadong tao, tao sa lang mga tourists, mas na-enjoy ko siya during uh, peak season. As, as usual, dami-daming tao, pila sa mga, mga iba't-ibang signs, pero sa off-peak, yun, sayong-sayo yung lugar. <laughs> yung, yung, yung space na kailangan mo is andon, so you can enjoy, you don't need to rush. To make sure you are traveling on good weather condition, visit Pagasa's website and social media sites for weather updates. Make a well-planned itinerary for a meaningful trip, whether on a solo backpack tour or camping with family and friends. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, Sagada Mountain Province. Welcome back to Why News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar, and here are the headlines. President Duterte says he will push for the West Philippine Sea Code of Conduct when he flies to Beijing later this month. The Department of Justice begins its preliminary probe into sedition raps filed against Vice President Lenny Robredo and several opposition figures. The United States Homeland Security lifts security notice on NAIA. And oil price rollback set next week. Good evening. President Rodrigo Duterte will appeal the code of conduct in the West Philippine Sea during his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping this month. He also reveals his interest to discuss the exploitation of marine resources with his Chinese counterpart. Rosalie Koz explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte will ask Chinese President Xi Jinping on the reason of the delay of the Code of Conduct in the West Philippine or South China Sea. The two leaders are expected to meet during the President's visit to China this month. A very big issue. Mm -hmm. I do not want trouble for my country, but whether we like it or not, uh, however, on which side you are, it would not be good for my country to be in a state of violence. The Code of Conduct, or COC, is a particular set of guidelines, responsibilities, and proper actuations of claimant countries in the disputed maritime territories. China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have been working on the COC to resolve the maritime conflict and avoid any armed encounter. President Duterte also targets to discuss the issue on exploitation of marine resources during his meeting with President Xi. He also said that he is in favor of the 60-40% arrangement in which the Philippines will gain more. And the uh, other side, mga, mga marine resources, uh, let us first uh, uh, be sure that we have the access and I'm most interested in the exploitation of the natural resources. Para sa akin, kung if it's uh, without touching on the validity of who's the real owner, takes time. Maybe we can start the talks, but uh, I'm, I'm most interested in the extraction of the natural resources. The president says he will also insist on his commitment not to let foreign troops and nuclear weapons to station in the country. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Meanwhile, Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Zhao Jinhua on Friday said Beijing's rejection of Manila's arbitral victory over the South China Sea will remain as President Rodrigo Duterte said he would finally bring up the landmark ruling with Chinese President Xi Jinping. 
Manila Water Company Incorporated President and Chief Executive Officer Ferdinand de la Cruz is scheduled to step down on August 31. This was announced through a disclosure of the Philippine Stock Exchange following a meeting by the firm's board of directors on Thursday afternoon. In a statement on Friday, de la Cruz confirmed his resignation citing personal reasons. He will be replaced by René Almendras, taking over as President, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Chief Sustainability Officer of Manila Water effective September 1, 2019. Almendra served as Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Energy and Cabinet Secretary during the administration of former President Benigno Aquino III. Several respondents in the sedition case filed against Vice President Robredo and several opposition figures questioned the authority of the Office of the Solicitor General in representing the PNP CIDG before the Justice Department. My Bermudez will tell us why. The first hearing on the sedition charges against Vice President Lenny Robredo and several members of the opposition pushed through at the Department of Justice today. Respondents and lawyers from Free Legal Assistance Group Attorney Erin Tanyada, Attorney Chel Jokno, Attorney Florine Hilbay, Attorney Philip Sawali and former Supreme Court spokesperson Attorney Theodore Te were present in the hearing. Peter Joe Melad Vincula, the primary respondent and witness on the case, was also there. The vice president and more than 30 others are tagged to be behind Project Sodoma, an ouster plot against President Rodrigo Duterte through the proliferation of the Ang Totoong Narco List videos. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, or PNP CIDG, was represented by Assistant Solicitor General Angelita Miranda, something questioned by several respondents. Ang OSG, Tribune of the People, no? Hindi tuta ng Malacanang. Kaya dito, in the end, they may even move for our acquittal or dismissal ang kaso. So it should not sandbag itself into becoming a defender of the attempt of the administration to eliminate all dissent and dissenters. Kung tutusin, na inamin din naman nila na nakialam din sila sa paggawa ng salaysay ni Advincula. Kaya yun ay palagay ko isang lehitimong tanong. Sino ba talaga at bakit ba talaga, ano ba, ta ano ba talaga nasa likod nitong kaso nito? Tayo po ay Solicitor General, ah, hindi ko naisip na makialam sa investigation on criminal matters. Dahil yung power ng OSG, uh, in criminal cases is limited dun sa appeals no? and mawawala yung independence ng opisina na yun kung sa level pa lang na investigasyon ay nakikialam na sila. The Office of the Solicitor General is an independent and autonomous office attached to the Department of Justice but the DOJ's authority, control, and supervision over the OSG are limited only to budgetary purposes. Assistant Solicitor General Miranda refused to grant media interviews but mentioned to reporters Executive Order 292 which grants powers to the Office of the Solicitor General to represent in court and proceedings but protecting the nation welfare. The respondents' counter-affidavits were supposed to be submitted today, but State Prosecutor Olivia Torrevilla said they have received 15 pleadings from the respondents. Most of them seek the suspension of the hearing as they are yet to receive additional evidence from the CADG. The panel has given the CADG 10 days to submit the storage device that contains video footage relative to the case. The next hearing is set on September 6th. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Senate leadership expresses support to a resolution that seeks to allow the participation of detained Senator Lila de Lima in plenary sessions using technology such as video conferencing. But the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission chairman says he is pretty sure the court will deny that. Del Maribohok will tell us why. Senator Laila de Lima is thankful for a move done by Senators Franklin Drillon and Panfilo Lacson. The two veteran lawmakers on July 31st filed a proposal in Senate seeking to permit the detained senator to join plenary discussions using communication technology. 
that is via teleconferencing, video conferencing, or other forms of remote or electronic communications. The lady senator has been detained for more than two years now and has failed to participate in any Senate plenary session since then. Senate President Vicente Soto III has already expressed support to the proposal. According to Senator Laxon, the Senate has procured the equipment to be used in technology-based communication. It was used by Senator Antonio Trillanes IV when he was detained during the Senate presidency of former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. If the teleconferencing gets a nod, the lady senator may interpolate and even propose amendments to the bill. But she is prohibited to vote as the Senate rules requires the physical presence of a senator to vote in the plenary. According to Senator De Lima's camp, clearance from the Philippine National Police is also needed. Ang rules ng PNP regarding sa mga tao sa custodial, ayun nga, bawal ang electronic gadget. So lahat yan, kailangan mo na din ang approval ng PNP. So akit yan kay General Albayalde. But the chairman of the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, Dante Jimenez, does not believe this will pursue. I'm pretty sure the, the court will uh, deny that. The Senate Committee on Rules will study the resolution before the Senate plenary tackles its. Senator De Lima, in a statement, says the resolution is great news for her. Nel Maribuho, UN TV News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. Be disciplined. This is Mayor Isko Moreno's call to truck drivers who use the South Harbor in Manila City. April Sinodosa will tell us why. Heavy traffic occurred on the northbound lane of Ross Boulevard due to the delay of operations in South Harbor, Manila this morning. The Philippine Ports Authority or PPA temporarily suspended the operations of port cranes due to the bad weather. As a result, plenty of trucks were seen outside the port. The Manila Traffic and Parking Bureau advised motorists to avoid going to Ross Boulevard and Mel Lopez Avenue, as well as other routes in Manila, going to the pier. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno met with the heads of Truckers Associations, the PPA, and the Manila Traffic and Parking Bureau. The mayor called on truck drivers not to be selfish on the road. Isuyo kami sa mga truck operators na kausapin maigi yung kanilang mga driver. Pag traffic, traffic. Huwag natin buntisin ang kalsada. Let's follow the lane. The lane given to us. I mean, given to them. When there's heavy traffic, the drivers occupy other lanes for them not to be late and to avoid delays. Hindi rin maintindihan ng tao bakit kailangan mapuno ng truck ang kalye. Wala ang problema eh, talagang ganun eh. But it doesn't give us a right na okupahan, okupahan yung ibang lane. Sana naman, no? huwag yun ang ulitin. Eh. The PPA, for their part, affirmed Mayor Isko's call to truck drivers, saying they must be disciplined when passing at the South Harbor. Because of the weather condition, wala tayong magagawa kung talagang uh, it's due to the weather. So as of now, nabanggit nga ng ating butihing mayor, maganda na ang uh, traffic situation sa R10, and sa Delpan, and uh, all the rest of the uh, Bonifacio Drive. April Zanedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Good news for moderates. Oil companies are set to implement an oil price rollback starting next week. According to industry players, there will be a possible 1 peso and 20 centavos per liter rollback in diesel prices while 55 centavos per liter rollback in gasoline prices. The rollback is due to the fuel price movement in the world market. Be it within the comfort of your own home or in an office, Working for eight hours or more causes back pain. Even students who spend hours studying can experience the same. It's important to know what causes it and how to avoid it. Find that out from Harleen Delgado. As we start our day, most of the activities that we do involve sitting and standing. But what would you do when you start feeling back pains? 
According to physiatrist Dr. Bonifacio Rafanan, one of the most common causes of back pain is incorrect sitting posture and improper lifting. Talagang ang pagkupo, you increase the stress on your back as much as 60% if you're seated. Unlike pag nakatayo, less stress sa likuran. Meanwhile, the Philippine Academy of Rehabilitation Medicine or PARM adds treatments for back pains differ depending on its severity. But if it's a moderate pain, usually we go into physical rehabilitation. We have uh, physical modalities that gives heat, address the pain, improve the circulation. To avoid back pains, sit upright and avoid slouching. Do not practice the so-called Indian sit and refrain from sitting with your knees higher than the level of your hips. Stand up from time to time and do some stretching. Most of all, Dr. Rafarman stresses exercise is important. So a lot of focus is on the core, no? core muscles natin, yung abdominal, yung back muscles, yung hips. No? So it's very important that we engage in some sports activities or exercise program or fitness training. Aside from maintaining proper body mechanics, having a balanced diet is also essential. Pag masado tayong bumibigat, no? so ang load or stress sa ating likod eh, medyo tumataas. Kaya exercise proper body weight no ideal body weight sana para maiwasan yung pananakit ng likuran if you're starting to feel uncomfortable with your back pain better consult a physiatrist parm has more than 400 skilled physical and rehabilitation medicine specialists across the country harleen delgado UNTV news and rescue kazan city With poverty comes malnutrition, and the Commission on Population or POPCOM says malnutrition in the country remains prevalent. Angela Lagunza details why. Malnutrition has been a problem in the country for a long time. To address this, a lot of programs have been done, but it still remains to be an issue the government is trying to resolve. According to POPCOM Executive Director under Secretary Juan Antonio Perez III, in the past 15 years, the number of those malnourished does not go below 30% of the Philippine population. Malaking problema pa rin natin sa nutrition aspect na isa sa bawat lima ay underweight, tapos mga 30% ay mas mababa kaysa height na expected nila. Yusek Perez added that 40 to 50 percent of Filipinos say they are poor and all those who are malnourished come from this group. In fact, based on the data from Popcom, 7 out of 10 Filipinos do not get proper nutrition from the food they eat. Just like a family we encountered from Bagumbayan, Taguig City, Romaline Kahanap is a mother of eight and is pregnant with a ninth child on the way. Looking closely at Romalin's children, it is quite obvious that they are very thin with big tummies and stunted or are very small for their age. Ito ay resulta ng maling diet. It can be poor diet dahil kulang sa mga nutrients yung kinakain natin. Undernutrition, which can result to stunting or wasting. Pag sinabing stunting, um, kulang yung kanyang height according sa kanyang edad. Uh, Pag-wasting, kulang ang kanyang uh, timbang ayon sa kanyang edad. The family typically eats rice with water and salt and soy sauce day by day. There really is no denying that they lack proper nutrition. Romalin being pregnant with a child and her one-year-old child drinks instant milk which lacks nutrients needed for proper development. According to Yusek Perez, cases like Romalin's is what the government is focusing on. Yung stunting may impact din yun sa brain development, sa um, intellectual capacity to some extent ng mga kabataan. Kaya may impact yan sa quality ng population. So sa amin, ang worry namin yung quality ng population affected by malnutrition and specifically by stunting na um, sa buong buhay na, na dala mo na yan. Romaline recognizes that her children need the proper nutrition from food, but she has no other recourse than to make do with the food on their table. Romaline Kahanap and her family are one of the families that encounter hunger and malnutrition every day. 
When will the Filipinos be truly free from this kind of suffering? Watch the whole story on Historia, Saturday, 5 p.m. Angela Lagunsad, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Why News continues. Here are the top stories. Calling emergency hotline number 911 is now free. But prank callers beware of penalties. Let's ask Grace Kassin why. Every second is important during emergency situations. This is why the Department of the Interior and Local Government say they will not let lack of mobile credit get in the way of saving lives. Calling for help using emergency hotline 911 will be much easier now. What's more, it's for free. The authorities' response time to call is 5 to 7 minutes. This is based on President Rodrigo Duterte's directive to strengthen the emergency hotline. Uh, Bureau of Fire Protection. So, kung tatawag ito yung ating mga kababayan, ay uh, makakasa sila ng immediate response ng uh, ating kapulisan. But DILG USEC Malaya warns they will penalize frank and fraudulent callers. So, kung kayo po ay uh, matayunan na ganun, eh, pasensyahan tayo. No? Uh, we will uh, prosecute those who are ano, utilizing 911. Uh, to do prank calls kasi may patas naman po na pwedeng gamitin ng DILG for that. Under Presidential Decree 1727 and those found guilty may be punished with imprisonment of not more than 5 years or a fine of not more than 40,000 pesos. Based on the agency's data from January to June 2019, 15% of total calls received are either fraudulent, hoax, or prank calls. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Caloacan City. Meanwhile, the United States Department of Homeland Security, or USDHS, has lifted the public notice on security conditions at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. On Thursday, the USDHS has released a statement saying the Philippines has made significant improvements at the NAIA. Based on the statement, the Manila International Airport Authority, or MIA, and Various civil aviation security authorities have demonstrated their willingness to work towards sustaining the improvements. United States Ambassador Sung Kim also congratulated Department of Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade ahead of the official advisory. Last December 2018, the USDHS has issued a public notice due to the ES failure to adequately implement and maintain international security standards. A new United Nations report say slashing greenhouse gas emissions from cars and power plants won't be enough to avoid the worst effects of climate change. To meet the goals of the Paris Climate Accord, experts say humanity also needs a new approach to managing the land beneath its feet. Verdi Petalio will tell us why. From eating less meat to farming, with fewer chemicals and protecting forests, there are many ways people can use land more wisely to rein in global warming and feed a growing population at the same time, a United Nations report on the effects of climate change concluded on Thursday. Although the report stopped short of explicitly advocating going meat-free, it called for big changes to farming and eating habits to limit the impact of population growth and changing consumption patterns on stretched land and water resources. Plant-based foods and sustainable animal source food could free up several million square kilometers of land by 2050 and cut 0.7 to 8 gigatons a year of carbon dioxide equivalent. Diets that are high in grains, nuts and vegetables have a lower carbon footprint than those that are high in meat and they lead to better health outcomes. But of course, dietary choices are influenced by local production practices and cultural habits. The IPCC met this week in Geneva, Switzerland to finalize its report, which should help to guide governments meeting this year in Chile on ways to implement the 2015 Paris Agreement. Land can be both a source and a sink of carbon dioxide, the main greenhouse gas blamed for global warming, and better land management can help to tackle climate change, the IPCC said. When land is degraded, it reduces the soil's ability to take up carbon, and this exacerbates climate change. In turn, climate change exacerbates land degradation in many different ways. 
But it is not the only solution, and cutting emissions from all sectors is essential to quickly curtail global warming. Over the last 150 years, temperatures on land have increased by about 1.5 degrees Celsius, almost twice as fast as they have for the planet as a whole. According to the report, this warming has resulted in more extreme weather events and has shifted the ranges of plants, animals, pests, and diseases. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Damaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. Several hundred individuals who were arrested in what federal officials said could be the largest worksite enforcement operation in a single state have been released by immigration authorities on Wednesday. But despite this, friends and family members are still desperately searching for answers. Judith Anno Fuente will tell us why. Federal authorities have released 300 of the nearly 700 workers detained in the Mississippi immigration raids on Wednesday, according to officials. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency conducted the raids on Wednesday at seven food processing plants throughout central Mississippi. About 680 people were said to have been detained. The raids sparked condemnation from Democrats and activists as stories emerged of children separated from their parents. Officials say they took steps to ensure any children were properly cared for. This is not the result of some outcry in Mississippi. Let the world hear this clearly. What happened yesterday is not the response to some demand on the part of Mississippians that these people be tied up and hauled off. Mm -hmm. Mississippi didn't ask for this. Mm -hmm. This was decided at the highest levels, starting with the Trump administration, mm -hmm. and the world needs to understand that simple point. Okay. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or said approximately 680 removable aliens, had been detained during the operation, which saw agents arriving in buses to question and arrest workers at the plants. President Donald Trump had announced an immigration crackdown in June, saying millions of illegal aliens who had found their way into the U.S. would be removed. ICE spokesman Brian Cox on Thursday said that those who were not released will be moved to an ICE detention facility and held there. ICE did not share about the nationality of those detained, but the Mexican government has reportedly sent consular staff to the area to help any of their nationals who may be involved. Judith Anofente, UNTV News and Rescue. Britain will relax its immigration rules to attract more top scientists after Brexit by seeking to fast-track visas, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said via Facebook Live on Thursday. The fast-track immigration route, which the government hopes to launch later this year, would be framed to attract elite researchers and specialists in science, engineering, and technology. It could also ensure independence of successful applicants could access the UK, UK labor market and remove the requirement of having a job offer before arriving. Johnson's office added that the government would also provide additional funding for scientists and researchers who had sought European Union funding ahead of Britain's exit from the bloc, which Johnson has vowed will take place by October 31st. We are today announcing here on Facebook Live that we are changing the rules on immigration so as to make the UK uh, even uh, more open, even more welcoming to scientists from around the world. Because I want this country to be the greatest place for science. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi told the people of Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday that elections would be held soon in the state for the local assembly, two days after government's decision to end special status for the state and split it into two union territories. This report will tell us why. In an address broadcast on television and radio, the first time he has spoken to the nation on the decision, India Prime Minister Narendra Modi painted the move as one that will benefit the people of Kashmir. We all want that in the near future, Legislative Assembly elections take place and a new government is formed in Jammu and Kashmir. New bright and energetic youngsters become MLAs, ministers and chief ministers. I want to assure the people of Jammu and Kashmir that with full honesty and in a transparent environment, you will get to choose your own representative soon. 
Modi said the federal government would take steps to create more economic opportunities. This week's move tightening New Delhi's grip on the contested region withdrew the Muslim-majority state's right to frame its own laws and allowed people from outside the region to buy property there. Modi added that once the law and order situation improves in the region, Jammu and Kashmir would again be converted into a full-fledged state. Indian authorities have imposed a communications blackout on Kashmir for a fourth straight day, stopping media from being able to report what is happening there. Modi said that the government had taken the decision to repeal Article 370 and 35A of the Constitution for the overall development of the region. These legal provisions created hurdles to extending legal benefits to women, minorities and students that the rest of India provides. Introduced decades ago, the constitutional provisions provided autonomy to the state authorities to limit the implementation of Indian laws as well as to keep people from other parts of the country from overrunning the state. Under this new system, together we can free Jammu and Kashmir of terrorism and separatism. Modi also exhorted large corporations, including information technology companies, to invest in the state and generate jobs for the people from the region and promised to step up infrastructure projects in the region. The Indian government's move has drawn a strong reaction from Pakistan, which has taken a series of steps to exert diplomatic pressure on its neighbor. Kashmir has been at the heart of 70 years of hostility between the countries. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. A mom's voice calling out for her missing daughter was played over loudspeakers during a search of the Malaysian jungle. Police believe Nora Koirin, 15, who has special needs, is still somewhere near the Dusan Resort where she vanished from on Sunday. They played loud hailer recordings of Mia Koirin calling Nora's name during the search of nearby rainforest. Police believe she could be lost, but her family fear she has been abducted. A ban on tourists sitting on Rome's famous Spanish steps has divided the capital, with critics describing it as excessive and even fascist. Jovic Burmas will tell us why. You can walk up and down Rome's famed Spanish steps all you want, but don't try sitting down to take in the moment anymore, because police will shoo you away with a whistle and threaten you with a fine. Rome authorities have imposed a new ban at one of the eternal city's most famous tourist sites. Immortalized in the 1953 romantic comedy Roman Holiday with Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn. They say too many people sat down for too long, obstructing the steps for others, or stopped to eat lunches from nearby fast food joints, and that order needed to be restored. Not everyone took the measure sitting down. I think it's ridiculous. Silly. <laughs> it's silly. silly. Wrong. You're only going to rest for a little while on stone anyway, so you eventually move along. But... Vittorio Sagarbi, one of Italy's best-known art critics, called the move fascist-like. Fines for those who do not obey police range 160 to 400 euro or more than 9,000 to 20,000 pesos. But so far, no signs have been put up informing tourists about the ban leaving police a lot to whistle about. The 135 steps were built in 1726 and one of the Italian's capital's many UNESCO World Heritage Sites and a popular tourist attraction. The ordinance also applies to other protected sites in Rome, such as the Trevi Fountain. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, Europe. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Kath de Maraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. They are not just ordinary youngsters. Brazil's Hugo Calderano and Puerto Rico's Adriana Diaz just won their slots to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. The two won prestigious titles on their own right at the 2019 Pan American Games in the Peruvian capital city of Lima on the evening of Wednesday. The Brazilian beat Wu Gianni of the Dominican Republic after recovering from a three games to two deficits before dominating the seventh, while Adriana beat defending champion Wu Yue of the United States. The 2019 Pan Am Games run from August 4th to 10th, 2019.
Wish 107.5 in the United States brought not just music, but much more fun as it celebrated its first year in the industry. Here's Nina Armilio to tell us why. Wish 107.5 in the United States made its debut on September 7 last year. It coincided with the unveiling of the Wish bus in Hollywood, California with live performances from various artists from across the U.S. And on August 4th, Wish USA celebrated its first anniversary with a fun run and mini concert at Hanson Dam Recreational Center called the Wish USA Run and Rhythm 2019. 700 runners from different states participated in the 10K, 5K, and 1-mile categories. Virtual runs were also held across the U.S. and Canada with thousands of runners. The real reason why I came is Rock Stallion and to support WISH! and the Wish Bus and all you do. So thank you so much for having the event and thank you to all volunteers, supporters. Yeah, I haven't run 5K in many years. Mm. So it was, uh, I was a bit apprehensive, but yeah. it was uh, the spirit of the crowd carried me on. Oh, it's very overwhelming. I love it. We're ha we have fun knowing that, you know, a lot of people is running together with us. I feel proud that I'm in this and I know it's for a good cause. And in the mini-concert, local and Filipino-American musicians like U.S. country singer Sophie Lin, singer-songwriter, record producer and Wish DJ Robin Rivera, Bronson Vidas, Michelle Limani and Rock Stallion performed for the crowd. The event has been successful. Everyone's been working very hard on this while I was gone. So, but look at the turnout. There's around maybe a thousand people here today. This event is crazy. Coming here, we pulled up up front and there was tons of people lined up to get started with the race. The Vice Consul of the Philippine Consulate in Los Angeles also joined the celebration. I wish Wish USA all the best and congratulations on behalf of the Philippine Consulate General for their anniversary and for this wonderful event. And it's definitely a fun way to start your Sunday morning. So I wish you all the best. Thank you. As Wish USA's second year begins, wishers can look forward to seeing and listening to bigger names in the music industry, plus many more major events to come. Nina Armilio, UNTV, News and Rescue. We often get stuck in heavy traffic, don't we? Well, here are some of the best ways to enjoy time while on a bus or jeepney or even driving on your own car in the middle of the monster traffic. Ramon Hopson. In a Facebook post by Alvin Frejas, he saw two motorcycle riders playing Rock Caesar and Paper in the middle of the road. Other motorists do the same apparently. This lady did not seem to be bothered by other commuters. She finished separating lumpia rappers during her jeepney trip. Even Zach Lucero, the former drummer of the band Imago, used the beat of his windshield wiper and sang a song to entertain himself. Aside from this fun stuff, there are other productive ways to ease that boiling temper when caught in horrendous traffic. First, think, think, think. If you can't easily move, you can still think freely. You can take advantage of the long hours to ponder on some things, like your goals in life and plans. If you're on a taxi, you can chat or have a big talk with the driver so you can both enjoy the time. If you leave your house prepared, you can listen to pre-downloaded podcasts and audiobooks. Even if you're stuck in traffic, you can still learn. With the spare time on hand, you can call your parents or an old friend to catch up. Just plug in your earphone so you won't need to hold your phone and to avoid snatchers. Breathe and stretch. If you're at a stoplight, 
pull your handbrake and do some stretches. This will help your blood circulate freely so you won't feel groggy when you finally reach your destination. If you feel you are situated in a snatcher-free place, you can watch your favorite series or even play a game on your phone. Just download it beforehand and maybe you can even finish a season or two. Just what they said, even if you complain and get stressed, the traffic situation will not improve. So just chill out, think positive, be productive in the middle of the monster traffic. Monhokson UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this August 9, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Yes, I am open to the use of the vaccine again. Marami ang partay na. It's an epidemic. Now, compare it with the vis-a-vis uh, -vis with those who died. I want to hear the words of uh, the experts, doctors. And we have enough uh, bright people here to tell us. I do not need foreigners to telling me. My own Filipino scientists and doctors would tell me what to do. Ang OSG, tribune of the people, no? Hindi tuta ng Malacanang. Kaya dito, in the end, they may even move for our acquittal or dismissal ang kaso. Tutusin na inamin din naman nila na nakialam din sila sa paggawa ng salaysay ni Advincula. Kaya yun ay palagay ko isang lehitimong tanong. Sino ba talaga at bakit ba talaga, ano ba, ano ba talaga nasa likod nitong kaso nito? I do not want trouble for my country, but whether we like it or not, however on which side you are, it would not be good for my country to be in a state of violence. The way we produce food and what we eat contributes to the loss of natural ecosystems and declining biodiversity. When land is degraded, it reduces the soil's ability to take up carbon and this exacerbates climate change.